So as many of you know, I really do love getting a good deal. And to get a good deal, I don't mind buying things used, secondhand, or open box. And I ended up picking up a Logitech Blue Sona as an open box item. Um, you can tell the box is in a little bit of rough shape, but the microphone itself is in good shape. And I wanted to kind of talk about it. I wanted to compare it to my pod mic. I wanted to talk about its value proposition, both what I paid for it and also its full price. Um, and then just also talk about where, you know, getting a microphone of this price point, which is quite higher than what most people would be using for, if it's worth it. And we're also going to end up seeing if my D&D &D group can notice the fact that I changed my microphone. Now, we'll figure that out at the end. I'm not going to expose any of them on my video, but I will tell you the results when I go ahead and use this for D&D tonight. So let's just go ahead and get this box open. Um, as I said, the box is in a little bit rough shape, but the microphone itself is actually pretty good. Um, so if we go ahead and open this up, we'll see. I'm actually missing one of the adapters. Um, this is the screw adapter. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of adapters. You can buy them pretty cheap. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but also all of the microphone arms that I've had have included their own. So I didn't have to worry too much about that. It comes with the spare cover, which is a very bright red. I'm not, not too much of a fan of it being so bright and vibrant. So I'm going to leave that one in the box. And we've got the microphone itself. No longer has any of the plastic on it, but it itself is in very good shape. Um, it has a few little scratches and dings on it, but overall pretty good. So if we take a look at the microphone itself, it's got a pretty simple and nice design. Um, it's very tubular, kind of shares the impression of the Shure SM7B, um, but more squared instead of round. The pop filter comes off very easily. Actually, I don't like pulling it from there, but it's magnetized on there. Um, so you have the cage for the condenser. Everything is in very good shape, no dents or anything like that. And this just pops right on there like that nice and magnetized. You have the arm, which rotates all the way around. Um, so that's nice. You know, if you, if for some reason you want your XLR cable coming out the top, um, instead of at the bottom, you can do that. But you've got all that. And then we also have this little secret sauce that Logitech has put in here, which is the base cut and the presence. One of the unique things about this microphone is that it has a preamp built into it so you shouldn't need any kind of lifters or anything like that. It does a really good job on its own. And we're gonna test that out in a second. All right, so I've got both microphones here. I have the uh, Blue Sona on a tripod that I have a microphone attachment or uh, adapter on the tripod screw. And that is going into my second input. And then my Rode pod mic is going into the main input as per usual. I set up the um, Blue Sona using the Shure SM7B preset. I did have to bring the gain down all the way down to 26 dB, which is quite a bit different. My pod mic is actually at 55 dB of gain. So quite a big, big difference there. Um, the Blue Sona also uses phantom power, so you have to make sure that your uh, mixer supports phantom power. Now let's go ahead and change the audio that you're hearing to the Blue Sona so that you can compare and see what that sounds like. We're just gonna do a quick swap. And now you're listening to the Blue Sona. Um, I had to adjust those uh, the gain, which is 26 for the Sona. I pulled that all the way down so that it matches exactly with the 55 in terms of levels um, with my uh, pod mic. And I mean, I did a couple of checks. It sounded pretty good, but we're gonna just talk on this for the rest of the time here and we're going to check the presence and base cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the base cut first. So this is what the microphone sounds like with the base cut. Let's turn that back off. And let's try ahead and do the presence. So this is what the presence sounds like with it on. Let's go ahead and turn it back off. And yeah, I mean, the mic looks good. I like the way it looks. And one of the biggest features and selling points of the Blue Sona is the fact that it has that inline preamp, what they call the clear amp. And it was a huge selling point when this microphone got announced. It is how they justified the pretty hefty price tag. And it was its big uh, uplift over the Shure SM7B 
because the SM7B, a lot of people that used it required having a cloud lifter um, in order to get enough power out of the microphone for the levels to be reasonable without having to boost it crazy on their on their mixer if their mixer didn't have really strong uh, preamps built into it. Now, Sure just announced the SM7BB, which has a built-in preamp. Um, so I'd be very curious to see how that sounds. And I believe its pricing is $500 US, which compared to the Blue Sona, which is about $350 US right now, that is quite a big difference. Um, so I'd be really curious to see those comparisons when they start happening. But so far, I think it sounds good. It is very easy to set up. It was really nice that I was able to turn that gain all the way down and still have it at the same level as the road. And what I'm going to do is in about 20 minutes, I have my D&D game. I'm going to be talking entirely with the Blue Sona. I'm going to see if they notice a difference at all. Um, and then I'm also going to go ahead and listen to the differences between the two microphones in this clip here. And we'll see if we notice anything different. We'll do a couple more speaking comparisons. I'll do some um, words from maybe Dune. And I'll say a paragraph or a sentence into each microphone. We can compare the two and then we'll finish off with some conclusions. All right, so we're back and listening to the recording. Everything sounded really, really good. I actually really do like how this microphone sounds. It has a bit more overall presence than the pod mic does. The pod mic doesn't have as much of the lows. And I just feel like the sound that I, especially my voice on the Blue Sona just sounds a little bit more full and overall. Um, I think it sounds really, really good. So um, I was also extremely impressed with how well it seemed to reject a lot of background noise and a lot of movement of moving the tripod around. So I thought we would do a few quick audio tests. First one I wanted to do was comparing how it sounds with the uh, pop filter on and with the pop filter off. So this is how it sounds like with the windscreen or pop filter off. And this is how it sounds with it on. I think it sounds pretty similar when I was listening to it before. And uh, that's a pretty nice feature. Um, let's go ahead and see how much it rejects um, positional audio. So this is it being directly um, facing my mouth about a fist's distance away. And this is how it sounds once you start to rotate it away from yourself. This is me uh, 90 degrees away from the microphone. We bring this back towards my mouth. This is again straight towards my mouth. This is 90 degrees the other way. And you can hear how it really does drop off quite a bit. And here we go with it being entirely faced away from me and it drops off even more. Also keep in mind though that my voice is bouncing off of my monitors. Now, I've also noticed that this microphone does a pretty good job with plosives. I haven't noticed any issues. And we can do a few quick plosive tests by saying popcorn, popcorn, plosive popcorn. And I mean, it does sound pretty good from, again, when I was listening to it earlier. Now for the rest of the test, I'm gonna move this onto the boom arm where the pod mic is right now. And we're gonna compare some things that way. All right, so we've got the microphone on the boom arm. And let's go ahead and do my usual tap test on the boom arm. And we'll tap on the microphone mount itself. I think it does a pretty good job. Um, let's go ahead and see how it sounds with me typing on my keyboard. And also keep in mind that, again, this has the default settings for the Shure SM7B on my Rodecaster, so that's also going to affect things. Let's see how it sounds while I'm talking and typing and see how much of the typing it picks up and how much of the talking it picks up. These keys are Calibox Whites, so keep that in mind. And there's that. And let's see how well it reduces the sound from my desk when I'm tapping on it. Seems to do a pretty good job of that too. All governments suffer from a recurring problem. Power attracts pathological personalities. It is not that power corrupts, but that it is magnetic to the corruptible. 
Such people have a tendency to become drunk on violence, a condition to which they are quickly addicted. All governments suffer a recurring problem. Power attracts pathological personalities. It is not that power corrupts, but that it is magnetic to the corruptible. Such people have a tendency to become drunk on violence, a condition to which they are quickly addicted. All right, so for some final pros and cons with this microphone and my conclusions, pros, I think the background noise, the voice isolation, and all that kind of stuff is really, really good with this microphone. One of the problems with the pod mic is that it picked up literally everything. If someone was walking around upstairs, if someone turned on the sink on the other side of the house, it would hear it. And this microphone has so far done a much better job. And I'm very curious to see how well that continues in the future um, so that I don't have to record all my videos in the dead of night. And second, one of the biggest marketing pieces of this microphone is the built-in preamp. And I think it does an incredible job. It really does allow you to push clean audio from your microphone into a mixer without having to pump the gain on your mixer. Um, and again, it does, it does a very, very good job. And I think it sounds great with it. Now, one of the only cons or downsides is one of their other marketable features, which are those built-in switch filters. I don't like them very much. I think they're a little bit too aggressive. Um, I don't think I'll ever use them. Uh, they just, they seem to do too much and I would rather just use a standard EQ to help normalize my voice than trying to use a switch that drastically changes the sound of the microphone. So I'm really liking the Sona so far. Uh, I really like how it sounds on my voice. It sounds again, like I was saying a little bit more full, but I'd be very curious to hear how you guys think it sounds on my voice. The next few videos I'll be using the Sona. And I'd be really curious to see some comments from you guys saying whether or not you like the pod mic or the Sona more. And depending on that kind of feedback, I will either continue using the Sona or I'll switch back to the pod mic and maybe I'll sell this thing off used uh, just like I picked it up. But that goes to my conclusion where at the price point that I paid for it, which is about 200 Canadian, I definitely think this thing is worth it. It's still basically about double the pod mic price. But I think it does a really good job, and the improvements over the noise isolation is huge for me. It makes it so that I can record more often. I don't have to wait until the dead of night to be able to record my videos. And I just don't have to worry about trying to do as much post-processing in DaVinci Resolve to try to get, eliminate background noise. Now, full price Canadian, it's about 450 or 350 US. And at that price, it's a lot harder to justify um, there are a lot of people that spend that kind of money on microphones, and that's totally fine. Personally, for me, I don't think I'd be able to do that. Um, but when we were talking earlier, the Shure SM7B is extremely expensive at $400, and the new SM7DB is $500. So I'd be very curious if the $150 premium for the Shure um, makes it over the Sona, considering the Sona has the built-in preamp. And the SM7DB, the whole new thing about it, it's got its built-in preamp as well. So I don't have the money to pick up an SM7DB, so I can't compare them. I'll probably be watching a few videos in the next couple of days, uh, checking out the differences between the two. But again, I think for its price point and what it's trying to compete against, it does a very good job. But is it worth double or triple or four times the amount of the pod mic? I don't think so. The pod mic is a really good microphone for that price, um, but it all depends on what you want. The microphone looks good. It sounds good. It does a very good job. The build quality is immaculate. Um, it is built really, really well, and I think they've done a pretty good job with it. I'm happy. I, I didn't really expect an incredible microphone out of Logitech, but they do have the backing of Blue, so that does really help them out. So yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you think this sounds on my voice, whether or not you've seen other people using it and how you think it sounds for them. I'd be really curious to hear you guys' feedback. But in the end, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I hope you at least found it interesting. And if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you like subscribed. If you have any questions or comments, again, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Also, big thanks to my patrons, Lots Time and Step Back. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to afford to go out and buy relatively expensive used products like this. So I really do appreciate it. If you want to join their support, 
you can go ahead and do that on either Patreon or Ko-Fi. I have those links down in the description below. And last but not least, thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to check out any of my other product reviews, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.